If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. To calculate the electric flux through any surface of this cube, we'll have to consider the definition of electric flux. And according to that definition, the electric flux, which is symbolized by this Greek letter phi, is equal to a integral that's taken about an entire closed surface, which we'll explain shortly, of the dot product between the electric field and the so-called differential area vector. Now we have drawn the differential area vectors for the various surfaces of the cube, and you'll notice that in all cases they're directed perpendicular to the surface of the cube and pointing outward away from that surface. So that's a convention that we adopt when determining the electric flux using this equation. Now in part A we're asked to calculate the electric flux through the top face. And so if we outline the top face we'll notice that the y coordinate of that top face is actually going to be 2 meters. And we know that because we were told that the cube has edge lengths of 2 meters. So this surface right up here has a y coordinate of 2. We'll go ahead and plug in 2 into the electric field equation to determine what the electric field is through the top face of the cube. So there we've gone ahead and plugged in the 2. We can simplify inside the parentheses because we have 4 plus 2 which is 6 and then multiply that by the 3. So we'll actually have a minus 18 j hat for the j hat component and then the 4.0 i hat. So once we have the electric field that is flowing through the top surface of the cube, we can plug that in to our integral. And now we want to make a note about this differential area vector right here. Since we're calculating the electric flux through the top surface of the cube, this dA term is simply going to equal dA for the j hat component. Now we can say that again because we're only interested in calculating the electric flux through this top surface and we can see that the dA vector is pointing in the positive y direction which of course is represented by the j hat notation. So we're going to substitute this dA with this expression dA j hat. Next we will distribute into the parentheses on the left hand side and what we want to note and this is the result of the rules of taking dot products is that when we multiply a j hat by an i hat component they effectively cancel each other out so you're really left with just zero here and then also according to the rules of taking dot products when we multiply j hat components those effectively cancel so what we have is a minus 18 and then da here now of course this is negative 18 inside the parentheses and since negative 18 is a constant we can remove it to the outside of the integral and then we're left to integrate this dA. Now, of course, the integral of dA is just the area itself. So we have negative 18 multiplied by the area. Now, the area of the top face, because it's a square, is just going to be 2 times 2. So we can substitute that in for the area. We can write that as 2 squared. And then when we simplify that, we get negative 72. And the unit, if we go back to the original definition of flux, it's an electric field multiplied by an area. Now, of course, electric field is newtons per coulomb and area is meters squared. So we're going to have negative 72 newton meters squared per coulomb. This would be the final answer to part A. We now go on to part B, which wants us, wants us to calculate the electric flux through the bottom face. It's a little bit obscured, but here we have the bottom face, which is once again a square. Now we'll notice that the y coordinate of that bottom face is actually zero meters. And so we'll plug zero in for the y in our electric field equation. And then we'll simplify inside the parentheses. We would just have 2, and then we multiply it by the minus 3. So our electric field becomes 4.0 i hat minus 6.0 j hat. That's the expression for the electric field that we'll plug in to our integral. And then for the dA, because we're calculating the flux to the bottom surface, we note that the dA is projecting downward in the y direction. So we know that this dA can be substituted with negative dA j hat. Of course, it's negative because it's pointing in the y direction downward. As before, we'll have to distribute. And as before, an i hat multiplied by a j hat is 0. And then a j hat times a j hat, those j hats just cancel out. So we're also multiplying a negative by a negative. So this is actually plus 6. And then we have dA. That can simplify 
to just the integral of 6 dA. We'll pull the 6 out, and then the integral of dA is just going to equal the area. And just like before, the area of the bottom face is going to be 2 by 2, or 2 squared. And so when we finish this one off, we're going to have 24 newton meters squared per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer to part B. We'll proceed in a similar way for the left face. Notice that the left face, because it extends vertically, has a variable y component. And so we can't, like we did before, set a particular value for y, because it kind of varies from 0 all the way up to 2. But as we'll see, that will actually not matter, because it's going to cancel away. So let's set up the electric flux. And this case, for the electric field, we'll just use this entire equation here. Now, because we're determining the electric flux through the left face of the cube, we can say that dA, hopefully we'll be able to squeeze it in here, is going to be dA multiplied by negative i hat. Notice it's negative because the dA vector is pointing to the left, and it's i hat because it's pointing along the x direction. So we'll make that substitution. So now we'll have to distribute again, and when we multiply the negative i hat and the i hat, the i hats are going to cancel. So we'll write the integral as follows. We'll have a negative 4.0. Notice it is negative because we're multiplying a negative by a positive. And then conveniently, the i hat multiplied by j hat cancels away. So this is actually just minus 0, which we don't even have to write. We can just leave it as negative 4.0. And then we have the dA. The rest is the same. We can pull out the negative 4.0 and then integrate. So we're going to have negative 4 multiplied by the area. The area, once again, is just 2 squared. And so we're going to be left with negative 16. And then the unit of Newton meters squared per coulomb. So this would be the correct answer to part C of the question. On to part D, and there's a bit of a shortcut for this one. They're asking for the flux along the back face of the cube. But in order for there to be an electric flux to the back face of the cube, there would have to be an electric field component that's streaming through the back face. In other words, there would have to be an electric field component along the z-axis. And that way, electric field lines would actually be flowing through the back face. But we can see from the electric field equation that because there's only i hat and j hat, that there is no electric field component in the z direction. And if there's no electric field in the z direction, there's no electric flux flowing through the back surface of the cube. So in short, the answer to part d is going to be 0 newton meters per coulomb. And finally, to part e, the total or net electric flux through the cube, that can be obtained simply by adding the flux through all six sides of the cube. So let's just set that up. And so here they are. We have the top, bottom, left, right, front, and back. Now, we recall that for the back face, the electric flux was 0. And for the same reason, the electric flux through the front face is also going to equal 0. We determined in part A the top, part B was the bottom. The left face, we determined the right face is actually going to be the same as the left, except it's going to have the opposite sign. So if we plug in our values, we again have the top, which was negative 72. The bottom was positive 24. The left was negative 16, and the right will be positive 16. And so when we add those all up, we get negative 48 newton meters squared per coulomb. So this would be the final answer to part E. Remember that the flux through the right face of the cube has the same magnitude as the flux through the left face of the cube, but just opposite signs. And that's how we knew that the flux through the right side was positive 16. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.